cash flow forecasting. This presentation looks at the concept of cash flow forecasting and how it can be used by a business to make decisions. So let's start with the basics. What is a cash flow forecast? Well, it's a prediction of the inflows and outflows of money in an organisation. And managing of cash flow is one of the most important elements of business finance. If you fail to manage your cash flow, then it's likely your business is destined to failure. Now remember, cash flow is not profit. Cash flow is the money going into and out of the business. Well, remember, profit is defined as your revenue minus your costs. And the best way to think about cash flow is in a bathtub. You've got a tap that brings in money, and you've got a plug hole that drains out your money. And that level of money in your business is the water in your bathtub. So think of the cash flow as a bathtub, like we said there before. However, it's not water in the bath, it's money that runs into your bath. Okay, let's look at the inflows into the business. So money that comes in via the taps. Now this is sources of revenue. Now, in the cold water tap, we've got things like sales revenue, so that the items we sell, our personal savings, so money I invest in my own bank account, and interest, maybe any money I get paid, so interest I get paid on any money in the bank, in my savings account. So these are all good sources of revenue. These are all from the cold water tap, so good things because they're not going to hurt me. Sales revenue is good because I'm going to make more money. Personal savings comes out of my own bank account, so I don't have to pay any costs on that. And interest is money I get when I save my money in the bank. However, in the hot water tap, we've got loans, like bank loans. Now, they have a hot water tap because they carry interest. There's a charge with them. If you use too many of these, you run too much water into your battery, you're going to get yourself burnt, and that's obviously bad. You don't want to do that. So all the money that goes out of the business is known as cost. Now, typically, they're going to go down our plug hole. Now, some examples of costs that we have in a business are things like purchases. So when we buy stock, so our cost of sales, buying our stock that we're going to sell, paying our wages. Bills, so it could be electricity bill, the gas bill, the telephone bill. Remember, it could be called utility bills. And it could be payments on our loans. So if we borrow some money from the bank, our interest repayments, they are a cost of the business. So the more we use that hot water tap, Ironically, then, why do we make our plug hole? Because we have to pay more money back. So let's have a look at an example in our bathtub. So as you can see here in my bathtub, there is the level of money in my bathtub. And if the business has too many costs, then more water is going to flow out of the bathtub and it might cause a problem with liquidity. And that look like. So as you can see there. So if I have too much water running out of my business, too many costs in my business, I potentially going to cause myself a liquidity problem. Now, you're probably thinking now, well, how do I solve that? Well, there's one obvious answer, and there's probably another answer that you may be thinking of, which is a no, 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 don't do that. So let's look at our two solutions. Option one is we increase our selling price, so we bring in more sales revenue. We turn our cold water tap on faster. We run more good revenue into our bathtub and fill it up quicker. Or we try and reduce our costs. They can be fixed or whatever. We make our plug holes smaller. So we run the same amount of water in, but we make the plug hole smaller so it can't run out. And hopefully, that will refill our level. Now, the obvious answer that somebody will come up with, which is a no, 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 never do in the world, is turn on the hot water tap. Because if you turn on the hot water tap to control your cash flow problem, so you run in some borrowed money, then what you tend to find is, yeah, you fill your bathtub up, but at the same time, you open up the width of that plug hole. Because every time you run in hot water and borrow from the bank, you're paying interest. Remember, interest is a charge, so you're going to make your cost get wider. So you're basically running that hot water down the plug hole, just wasting it, and it just runs in, the plug hole gets wider, and more water runs out of the bathtub, and it causes a continual problem. Okay, so we've looked at the bathtub, hopefully, and you've got an idea of what the concept is. So let's try and put it into a business sense now. Let's take a look at what a business cash flow looks like. As you can see, it looks just like this. You've got your inflows, you've got your outflows, you've got your net cash flow, your opening balance, and your closing balance. So your total inflows are calculated by adding all your inflows together. So actually sales and your bank loan, for example. So add them together there. I've got a column. Really simple math. Add them together. My total outflows, much the same again. As you can see there, I've added up my outflows this time. So my rent, my salary, and my utilities. And I've got a total for each month. My net cash flow, which gets a little bit more complex, is all, it's dead simple to do. You're just taking my total inflows for each month with my total outflows. Now you want to be a positive. You want to have a positive cash flow. You see in my first example, I got a negative cash on the first month. It got minus 1,100. In February, it's more positive 400. And in March, it's 900 positive. So it's going quite well. It's starting to pick up again after the first month of trading. Now, then I've got my opening balance. Now, my opening balance is typically my closing balance in the previous month. So this month here, so you can see there in January, closing balance, 
because my own imbalance. You know what, logically, I finish in January the 31st, and my bank account says minus 1,100. And of course, then on February the 1st, my bank account is going to read exactly the same. So it just moves up there. And of course, in this case here, in February, end of February, my bank account reads minus 700. And of course, that carries through to the start of March. Now, the only balance here is zero because it's a new business. But you'll normally be told what figure to put in this one if you're not given it. So you'll be saying if it's a new business, it might say zero, or it might say start with an opening balance, say 1,000 or 2,000 pounds. So you, what figure you put in there depends what your opening balance is. And then lastly, we have what's called our closing balance. And it's dead simple. That is your opening balance plus your, plus your net monthly. So what you started with here in your bank account plus what you did in this month, so what your current performance is, and that gives you closing balance. So as you can see, at the moment, in this first example, I've got minus 1,100. But in my second example, because we're positive 400, minus 1,100 my bank, but I've made £400 positive this time, means my bank account now closes at minus 700. And then it moves on here, so minus 700 starting with, we make £900 positive in this month here, so minus 700 plus 900 because it's a positive of £200. We are now out of debt. And that's great. We're not going to be overdrawn. At this point here, down here, we're overdrawn. We need to borrow money from the bank to cover ourselves. Remember, it's an overdraft. It's short term. We don't need to do it long term. We need to make sure we pay it back really quickly. Okay, what I'll do is give you a little example. So I have taken away some of the numbers. So you can check it by looking back anyway. But what I'd like to do is try and fill in those blanks. So see if you can fill the blanks and test yourself. If you can complete all those blanks, A, B, C, D and E, you understand how to do a cash flow, and you may be after this in your exam, completing a cash flow forecast for me. So have a go at it, then pause the video, and go back to the previous slide, and have a look at the answers. I kept the numbers very simple for you to have a go at. Okay, so what are the benefits of cash flow forecasting? It tends to be used to plan future investments in the business. So do you want to invest in a project? You can do some simulations and see how it impacts on a business. So if you're going to borrow some money, what's the impact? Or if you're going to use some money, how much money do you need to borrow? Because planning your borrowing means it might be cheaper than going unarranged borrowing. It enables you to make decisions on if you want to operate a new product or service. So should you go into that? So you can look at your market research and see if it's actually viable or are you going to be in lots of debts. And like I say, it really is important for borrowing money. So you know how much you want to borrow and if the bank will lend you that money. Otherwise, you might need to take out more expensive forms of borrowing, which could be have a real impact on your business. And you can also do some simulations. So you can plan for the future. You can see how any changes in capacity, for example, might impact on your cash flow. So let's look at cash flow and let's look at what it actually means. So as you can see down here, the ones that I've highlighted in red there, the closing balance is in negative. That means we need to probably use an overdraft. It's short term. It's not a long term problem, it's a short term problem. But because we're going to use an overdraft, it's got a charge. It means we're actually going to have to borrow the money from the bank and it comes with an interest charge. And that can be expensive. That's another cost for us. That's actually a cost we need to pay back. More positive side though, look at how we can interpret the figures on here. If you notice here, and our net cash flow suddenly goes positive, it means that we're starting to make actually a profit in these months. If you think about the net cash flow, that's basically what profit you're making in the month. And we're starting to make a profit here now. We're seeing the business is making some money. And by the end of it all, we start to pay back our overdraft. So we get back into the black, as it's called, away from the red. So you can see there's a positive figure there. Things are starting to change, and things are picking up for this business. So it's a good way of assessing how you're performing as a business. Look at the pattern that's happening. Now, you may come across this thing called credit sales. Now, some businesses won't ask their customers to pay up front in cash. They'd rather give them some time to pay. And if you don't have to pay up front straight away, it means you've got what's called credit. So that's like a credit card as well. You don't pay up front with a credit card. You might have 30 days or 6 days to pay. So let's look at an example. If you give your customers one month's credit and they buy a car in June, they're not actually going to pay for that car until July. So you as a business have got to stand out of that money. And then you've got to think about how can you delay how you pay your supplier. So how do you pay the person you bought the car from? You might want to delay it by two months so that you get paid and you've got a month to put that money in the bank and get some interest on it yourself. So cash flow actually and it ensures that as a business we can plan for our future borrowing. We can also adjust any future spending we've got. And it also tells us how we can invest any surplus money that we've got in our business. So it's quite important that we have one of these cash flows and we use it effectively to make sure that we can be successful in our business. Remember it's a cash flow forecast is a prediction where a cash flow statement would be the actuals we get. Okay, that's it. You should now be aware of the process of cash flow forecasting. 
including being able to actually construct and complete a cash flow forecast. You should also be able to analyse a business's finances and make decisions based on how they're performing looking at their cash flow forecast. Don't forget to follow me on my Twitter account at BBusinessB, subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can tweet me any areas of business you want to cover in the future. Don't forget to visit my website, it's bbusinessb.co.uk.